Welcome or welcome back to Watch Advisor on YouTube. It's Alexander speaking, your host, and today I am in Geneva, to be precise, in the part of Geneva that is called Blanc Les Oies, and we are at the headquarters of Frédéric Constant, and with me is Niels. Hi, Niels. Hi, Alexander. He is the CEO of the Frédéric Constant Group. In the group, you have Alpina and Frédéric Constant. And it's really a huge building where we are in and the watches are really manufactured and being produced around us in those different ateliers here. And Nils, your group of Frédéric Constant Group has been bought some years ago by the Citizen Group. You are yep. a partner of the Citizen Group. I think nothing changed. It's still Frédéric Constant and you have a new owner, but the things are the same as they were before. Pretty much the same, five years ago now. I've been wiser in the five years, that's, that's true. But uh, no, we drive the company pretty independent. Mm -hmm. uh, we are checking in regularly with our headquarters and on strategy, products, uh, financial, of course. Yeah. But basically, they let us really drive the company pretty independent. So Frédéric Constant is still what it was. It is a brand offering uh, watchmaking, what you expect for yeah, little money and good quality. That was, I think, uh, what Frédéric Constant meant to be when uh, Peter Stas and uh, Aletta Stas founded the company. Absolutely, that was the, that was the mission, uh, let yeah. more people enjoy luxury. Yeah. Started like in 88, 1988, yeah. almost 33 years ago, by Peter and Aletta. And uh, we're continuing that legacy, for yeah. sure. Yeah, it's crazy. We even make more beautiful watches, I think. Yeah, 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 of course you do, of course. But it's still what it is. You get uh, really, yeah, what you expect, uh, innovation, good quality, uh, amazing complications even for prices when you look you say can't be huh? because if you compare to others you say no that can't be don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell to get our latest notifications I, I said already the right word complication today uh, we're here to present um, something can we call that a horological complication we are going to talk about? Would you, would you say it is an horological complication? I think it's an horological revolution oh. that we are going to share with you today. <laughs> uh, we're talking about um, something Frédéric Constant has been introducing to replace the entire lever escapement. Lever escapement. The assortment. Yeah. The assortment, of course. Yeah, sure. So 20 something. 26 components. Replaced by one part. That's a revolution. So let, <laughs> let's, <speechless. laughs> let, let's go back a little bit yeah, further yeah, yeah. in time. Peter and Leda started in late 20, 2000 by developing their own manufacture. Mm. For them, it was very important to have independency, not being dependent from the big watchmaking groups, uh, but also have flexibility. And they started their own manufacture conception by collaborating. Collaborating in that time, uh, the Dutch University, the University of Watchmaking in Geneva, and they brought them together to make their own let's say, base manufacture movement. Why? To, uh, to differentiate. They wanted to be accessible in price, but differentiate versus the competition. That started with, an, with a base uh, open heart, open heartbeat manufacture, and that developed. Later on, we have been introducing uh, the 710 uh, with the date, the Moonface 705, the World Timer, but also the Perpetual Calendar. And we always kept the price accessible. We continued to develop. And we had done also the chronograph flyback. On the high tech, we even did a smartwatch, Swiss made. And even all the way up to the QP tourbillon. Now, this all helped us to continuing to, uh, to build a story and to differentiate ourselves, but also to gain credibility as a young watchmaking brand. 32 years, it's, uh, let's say, mid-aged already. <laughs> it, it starts to be mid-aged, but if you look at the giants that yeah, have of an course, history yeah. of 200 years, we can yes. never compete. Yeah. So we always need to go fast with developments. We want to push also to the limit, and by differentiating by innovations. And we did that with many complications, and we continue to do that. And now we do it really with the monolithic, the monolithic movement that we, have been, uh, that we are going to introduce to you today. Mm. That's really challenging 200 years of watchmaking industry. And we are very happy to introduce that today. Challenging 200 years of watchmaking means that uh, you all know that in a movement you have energy that comes through a gear train and the energy is then regulated by the escapement to show you the seconds, the minutes and the hours. Yes. And what happened is that uh, the Frédéric Constant Group 
eliminated the entire Swiss liver escapement and replaced it by one ultra thin monolithic disc, disc oscillator. Disc, yeah. oscillator. Yeah. This oscillator is vibrating at an incredible speed, 288,000 semi oscillations of vibrations per hour, yeah. 40 hertz. So imagine a normal watch, five, three, four hertz, four hertz, a chronograph, 28,800, five hertz. 36,000 semi-oscillation, and some of those amazing chronographs that have been done by one of those brands you have been mentioning with hundreds of years of history, 10 hertz, ah, 40 hertz. You 40 are hertz, at 40 yeah. hertz. Yeah. Now I'm, I'm curious, Niels. Um, who was the brain or who was the guy um, bringing this idea? Who was the guy who fished the idea? It became with a collaboration like we always do. Uh, in that time, Peter was, uh, was heavily involved, Peter Stas. Yeah. Uh, and he, he was working uh, together with the, the incubator Yes Delft in Holland. Okay. The origin of Peter and Naleta Stas also. He was on the board and he met there uh, Nima, Nima Tulu from Flexus. And Nima really came, hey, I might have something that you are interested in. Okay. I'm able to challenge the heart, the beating heart of a movement by one single component. And of course, yeah, in that time, a collaboration was born because Peter is always looking for innovation. So he called me right away. He said, Niels, you know, I found something. We should really find a way to do this. And since then, the collaboration started, but since then also a development started for us. Mm. He went back to me uh, together with Pim, who is on the back here. Uh, we, we brainstormed, what do we want? And for us, a few elements was very important. It needed to be small. It needed to fit into a six o'clock open heart. That's typically our DNA. Mm. But also, with that, it's lower in price because it's a silicon disc. The bigger the disc is, the more expensive it is. So we wanted to prepare really for large-scale production. The second point was it needed to be highest frequency possible, where you have the option, even on beyond, to be more very accurate, to be almost the most accurate mechanical watch ever made in history. And that's something, of course, that gives us a lot of future development. So with that briefing, they started to develop. And our team started to prepare the movement to bring them together. It mm. took them three years, but finally, in March, we launched. And in September, we're going to introduce the watch. And so Flexis delivers you the monolithic oscillator. Uh, oscillator? Yeah. Flexis produced the oscillator. They deliver the oscill oscillator. We completely produce the watch and assemble it mm -hmm. and regulate it. Mm -hmm. That happens in Geneva. Regulating to what uh, you said it's a very precise watch? Yeah. Or is it is going to be a very, I don't think that you're already there where you want to be. It's the first edition you're doing. Yeah, this is a, yeah this is, for us it was very important that the conception is ready and functional for large scale production. We didn't focus on precision yet, mm -hmm. because I've seen the questions also, why not highly precise yet? It's very simple. If you want to do too much in one, you're not going to make it. Mm. So the focus for us was very clear, let the conception run in large-scale production. Mm -hmm. And the aim was really have a cost precision, mm -hmm. at least to have some, something uh, given to the watch and to the watchmaker as a precision. But of course, yeah, the opportunities later on are massive. Mm -hmm. So the next generations of that movement, when they evolve, will try to, yes, with 40 hertz, sure. to bring it to a precision of maybe less than half a second or more. Potentially, that's, that's really in the uh, Per in day, the and we're talking about per day precision, yeah. yeah. That's incredible. It is. That's really incredible. But we have to first develop, continuing, continuing develop. It's very important to also see when the large scale production is going to be ready, mm -hmm. how the watch will do. I mean, 200 years, we have been leaning on, on let's say, the assortment with the movement. Mm -hmm. We're disrupting that now. You also need time to develop. Of course you need, of course. But it's still, it is 100% a mechanical watch. Don't expect any uh, chips whatsoever, no. batteries in there. It's uh, wheels, gear, uh, gear train. Uh, you, have class, you have all parts what you expect to have in a mechanical movement, plus the monolithic oscillating Yes, central <laughs> masterpiece. Yes. It's fun, you know. Um, I just explained. You know um, that that Frédéric Constant was famous for opening the the dials, showing the escape and the heartbeat. That's what the watch making. The, the watch is ticking. It's like if you're opening the heart of a, of, of a human being. And it is was. I think it's a, a fantastic idea to see. Okay, why not using the space and integrate something absolutely that is outstanding and yeah, ahead of time. 
yeah, we wanted to do it in a classical watch. Yeah. That's also important. Those those feedback we also receive. Hey, why didn't you put it in a high life case? Because everybody likes that. No, we are a classical brand. Okay. And when we launch something innovative, it brings the brand up, and you do that with a typical DNA product, and that's for us a classical product. It doesn't say that we're not going to do something different upcoming year. I expect year. you to do it, of course. Of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. I think still something very crucial is the price. Yeah, of course. We didn't touch that because uh, we, we, we do all this I, still. As yeah. I said, uh, uh, Frédéric Constant is innovating, but always for fair prices. And I think yeah. the price you're going to name now is going to thrill those watching. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. I hope so. So we bring the two watches in limited editions. So 810 pieces, 810 pieces for the standard steel. Mm -hmm. And the gold, 18 karat gold, will have 81 pieces. Mm -hmm. So the caliber name is the FC810. That's also the limited edition number. And the price for the stainless steel uh, is 4,500 euro. So including exactly, tax. Including tax, exactly on par with our strategy. Mm -hmm. Accessible, a fair price for a product. For such an innovation, that's really, uh, I would say, yeah, uh, that's... And the gold is 15,000, by the way. Okay, 15,000. Yeah. But you're really getting a, a piece of gold, huh? It's, it's, I am it's, sure. Yeah, yeah it's, it's something that has <laughs> some weight. It's not uh, one of those cases where you're looking in and say, okay, they really uh, looked at the geometry and they, they digged out everything. It's no, really, no. you get a piece of gold on, on top. Interesting. It's, so it's really challenging. Sure. And um, it's going to be continued with new models in the family. I am sure. Yeah. We, is, we, uh, uh, because I'm always seeing the Alpina logo over there. Is Alpina going to uh, get this innovation too? Some who, knows, who knows? Who knows? Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. It's not. For now, it's Frédéric Constant. Next year, the plan is ready for the coming two years. Mm. And you will see it in, in multiple different case variations mm. uh, gold, stainless steel coming. So let's focus on that. Mm. And then we really want to develop it further, even. And uh, later on, you will see it mm. probably also in Alpina. Is your mother company interested in it, Citizen? Of course. Oh, sure, <laughs> they're very happy. <laughs> I think so, yeah. yeah. Innovation is... Uh, they Innovation like. for them is also key. And, of course, uh, yeah. yeah. That's where it's aligned. Okay. Let's now discover the watch. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. With me now is Pim, the master of ceremonies. He is, uh, can I say that, the head of uh, development, head of watchmaking, head of many things. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, I'm a watchmaker, yeah. uh, head watchmaker, and um, I'm technical director of Frédéric Constant and Alpina. Here you can see, well, uh, I already took off the, uh, the calendar uh, plate uh, and the automatic bridge. Uh, so these are similar as our own or standard uh, manufacturing movements. Components, yeah. Yes. Okay. Also uh, the keyless system and at the back we can see some components uh, that are similar uh, as our m movement okay. structure. Okay. Niels already mentioned to me that this monolithic oscillator has a range of 6 degrees compared to a lever escapement where you have so from 280, 90 to 300 something degrees, depending yes. on how... Yes. Okay. So it, I think, or at least from my understanding, I think uh, there are more uh, shock impacts. Exactly true. Uh, first of all, when we started the development project uh, like three years ago almost, we had uh, the idea to put it in our manufacturing movement. But very soon we saw uh, the problems coming up uh, with the speed, for example. Uh, this is uh, going really, really fast. Uh, we have uh, 40 hertz, it's 288,000 beats per hour. So we had to get more speed uh, in the outgoing uh, gear train. But at the same time, we needed less torque. Okay. So we need, you can imagine that uh, we took away 26 components, steel or uh, brass components, which were turning 300 degrees of amplitude. And now we have one very thin oscillator, which is only one component, and very lightweight. And this is moving only 6 degrees. So actually, all those power we needed before in a regular uh, escapement, we don't need anymore. So that's why we had to... Uh, uh, transform the gear train ratio and transform the speed and lower the torque. We, we actually used the same barrel 
as we use in a normal manufacture movement. But normally it has, with a regular escapement, 38 hours of power reserve. And in this one, with the same barrel and same mainspring, we have 80 hours. So you can see that with less uh, power consumption, mm. uh, we extend more than double uh, the power reserve. Pretty impressive, an increase of power reserve from 38 hours to 80, just if you eliminate this Swiss lever escapement. Uh, people think because uh, of the, the frequency that is uh, much, much higher, 10 times higher to be exact, uh, that then the power reserve goes down, yeah. but that's not yeah. the case. Yeah. But now um, this is the last thing I want to show you really, and then you understand also much better probably uh, why this power consumption can be so low. Yeah. Here you can see how it's built up, yeah. and uh, the, the silicium plate actually is really lying or uh, sandwiched between this bridge, mm -hmm. the oscillator bridge, and the main plate. Mm -hmm. And now we can take it off, but of course you know... Can we see how thin it is? Uh, yes, yeah, okay. I will take it off. Yeah. But um, it is exactly very tight mounted on these pins, yeah. so I have to lift it up correctly, okay. uh, otherwise it will break, because it's okay. quite fragile okay. uh, once it uh, is outside. So that's why um, I can take it off best when you just drop it off. Then at least you don't touch it, okay. and you're sure that it's, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. That it's correct. So you can see here how thin it is actually. It's 300 microns thickness. And it's all in one layer, one layer of pure silicon. And you can see maybe on top, in the hole, where if I mount it, you can uh, see the, the escapement wheel turning around. But now at 12 o'clock, you see the hole. And there you can see the pallets also, uh, which are replacing the, the anchor or lever. And then you see there are four strings we call them flexures, and those flexures are completely straight, and they are replacing the hairspring. So the hairspring that we see already, uh, like Neil said, 200, um, 200 years already, uh, maybe even more, mm -hmm. um, uh, is now replaced by those uh, strings. And it's uh, fully anti-magnetic? Yes, of course, yeah, 100% sure. anti-magnetic. Anti sure. No influence by the enemy number one of a mechanical watch? Yes, exactly. On top. And the second thing also, which, um, which is very interesting, uh, is that uh, this part is fixed between those two bridges, or the main plate and the bridge. And that means that there are no axes, mm -hmm. which meaning there's no friction. Friction, yeah. And so no oil. No oil. No tension, nothing. No, yeah. nothing. Okay. So zero friction system. And uh, that's also uh, one of the reasons, together with the fact that it's very light mm -hmm. and the amplitude is low, mm -hmm. um, one of the reasons why uh, this escapement is so efficient. Mm -hmm. This monolithic body will not start itself to oscillate. You need kind of a, a, a first impact. Yes. A yeah. little impact. Yeah. How do you do it's that? It's just, uh, just a small, small shake. Of the watch? Then, yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And then it will start oscillating and oscillate until energy in the barrel is gone. Yeah, exactly. So here you can see the, the escapement wheel. It's very, very small and of course moving very fast. And to explain you the principle a little bit is that this wheel is going in here. And this actually, the escapement wheel is the last wheel of the gear train. So, of course, in the beginning you have the barrel, then you have the wheels, gear train. the gear train, yeah. that's the, the energy transmission, mm -hmm. so the barrel is the, the energy delivering. Then delivering, then the transmission, and then the last wheel of the energy transmission is this escapement wheel, which is going here inside the oscillator. Then the oscillator has those very tiny teeth and this oscillator is moving back and forth and then releasing one teeth at a time of this escapement wheel and does that 
288,000 times per hour. Incredible. I expect, of course, that you can't measure precision of a monolithic oscillator that has a frequency of 288,000 uh, oscillations per hour with a normal equipment. <laughs> yes, exactly. That was one of the issues that we uh, run into. Normally, a measuring machine uh, measures this um, with sound, uh, mm -hmm. acoustically, and uh, this is not a tic-tac anymore. It's more like a zoom, it's mm -hmm. this kind of uh, sound. So that was impossible. So we had to find a way to measure and determine uh, the position of this, of this movement. Mm -hmm. And that we, uh, we did together with H2I uh, and we developed this beautiful um, laser machine. And so you measurements are taken with a laser? Yes, exactly. You can see that, I can put it here, you can see already, already the red dot. Okay. Uh, and this red dot is uh, the laser pointer that goes on top of the oscillator. Mm -hmm. And the oscillator is moving back and forth. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, laser is counting one and zero, one and zero, one and zero. Mm -hmm. So with this measurement and the time lapse in between, we can recalculate with the computer the deviation per day. You can see here on the screen uh, the ups and downs, so the, the, the ones and the zeros of this measurement, this laser measurement. And actually this machine is taking 250,000 measurements per second. Once again, 250,000 measurements per second. Exactly. Okay. And, and Impressive uh, amount of data. But at the end, what the watchmaker needs to know is this. It's the deviation or the accuracy seconds per day. And as you see, um, we the, it's French, so it's a second par jour. It's not year or something. Uh, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so just to make We're it not clear, there it's yet. French. No, it's French. <laughs>uh, we had uh, it secured by its bridges up and down, by the main plate and its bridges. So it can actually never go beyond that point. That point. Yeah, so the breaking point will never uh, be achieved. And, and this is the key uh, of a shock robust watch. Okay. And this is It is as it. fragile un as any other mechanical watch. If you drop a mechanical watch, it will be harmed in a way. Because it is uh, not something you, you're supposed to drop on the floor, yeah. but it's not something you have to take extra, extra, extra care when no, you wear no, it. No, no, definitely not. And uh, we are, uh, we did some tests, uh, of course, magnetism, but also shock tests. It's temperature. All with, yeah, it's all without uh, ISO standards uh, of the watch industry, so uh, uh, it's all uh, all good. And uh, I want to sh show you one thing I really find really cool feature. Uh, and that's because of its uh, high frequency, you have this second hand, uh, which is moving 80 times per second. So every small second, it is moving 80 times. So every second is divided into 80 steps. Yes, exactly. Whoa. And this uh, results in the fact that it's smooth. You can yeah. even see the it. The second hand is swiping over swiping, the dial yeah, uh, yeah. like, uh, yeah, it's amazing. I think Wonderful. that's, uh, when I saw it for the first time, of yeah. course, uh, when you do development, uh, step by step, it's very you, you're building it. But when I saw that, it was like, wow, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. it's, it's very zen, I would say. Watchmaker's dream. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you um, for coming. Questions, whatever you need to know about the watch, of course, in the comment sections. If I can't answer them, I will send him the emails, as I do always, and he will come back to me and come back to you. But we, you will get your answers. Pleasure. Um, good luck for the future. Thanks a lot. We will be back once you present the watch that will be accurate to zero decimal something. It will be watch advisor discovering this watch, of course. <laughs> and yeah, you stay tuned as always. Um, and thanks for watching here from Geneva, headquarters of Frédéric Constant. And bye-bye for now. Bye.